drugs, it's, you know, everything is great at the beginning, and then slowly your life it's starts to spiral like down. Crap every single the morning. truth about addiction. Yeah, it was leading me to a place where I was not uh, really happy in my life. Votto entered rehab in 2010 due to this cocaine addiction. It's not a choice to have an addiction. Uh, how close do you think you were to dying? They said two hours. If I would have got to the hospital two hours later, that would have been it. Addiction has been proven to change someone in many ways. Changing their own beliefs, their attitudes towards their lives, and the lives around them. If you've ever been wanting to know what addiction can do to someone mentally, even if that someone is you, then this is the video to consider watching. Because in this video, I explain on how an addiction can change someone mentally and the real truth around addiction. When I talk about addiction, this includes what we may get addicted to. Now, whether it's substance addictions, such as drugs or alcohol, compulsive gambling, money, sex addiction, obesity, binge eating, or even your work or internet and gaming addiction. Everything I've mentioned here is not evil. And many things may have begun with a good intention, but not all. Question. If what you're addicted to is not bad, then what is? For that, we need to understand what addiction is and the effects it has on one. tried everything we possibly could. Um, we don't seem to be getting anywhere. Um, he keeps relapsing. Is someone an addict? Are they not? Do you know? Or are they portraying to show themselves as someone else? Sometimes we can't even tell the difference between the two. Many things turned out to be better for me in my life. When I stopped with the escapism, and I made peace with the fact that no matter how much I hid, things just wouldn't get any easier. Addiction can become a full-time job, taking over your whole life, and your life generally begins to suck. You see this world differently eventually, when you'd rather have a better life, a more useful one, I begin to see the world in a better light. For me, initially, when I was in school, and I had my first job as a waiter. I began using drugs then, and it is commonly known to be around that age of building an addiction. I would say addiction was more on a part-time basis then. How it became from part-time to full-time, I cannot really say. But what I can say is that everything changed. And when I mean everything, I mean everything in my life, including me. I don't think anyone has ever seen it coming. And when you don't see something coming, it's impossible to defend yourself. So let's cover what an active addiction is doing to someone mentally. Now once an addiction has got a hold of you, this becomes the reason for your survival. And now without this, you may feel that you cannot survive. This is addiction. Therefore, you wouldn't care about anything else but the addiction as now your survival is at stake. I really do wish that this wasn't the case, as one can go to many extents to feed the habit when it's linked to their survival. But this is what I've understood. This is addiction. Your brain, your brain has been hijacked. hijacked. I don't know I don't know how to get him to start taking care of himself running out of options with our son um, we feel like we've tried everything we possibly could struggling with addiction for 14 years it's hard to break free we're gonna die no we're not man. at this point it wasn't about being happy it was about surviving and you become 
a slave to that. Humans today, though, are hardwired to pay attention to other people and animals more so than non-living things. Even the most dedicated office worker has survival instincts. My first point on the truth about addiction, the survival hardwiring. We are wired to survive. When our brain detects a threat, the amygdala, I know it sounds like an expensive necklace, like the amygdala has been robbed from the... Let's get back to the video. This is an area of the brain which involves our memory, emotions, and our survival instincts. This activates and hits the roof. Our stress hormones are automatically released, triggering the body's incentive reaction to danger. This stress response is one of the ways the body helps mobilize us to cope with survival threats. But it's only helpful up to a certain point. To a certain point that even when this alarm is going off at the wrong times, that when we need to feed our habit for our survival. So when the person is not able to feed the habit, they go into the stress response. The threat to their survival response. Now this is agreeable with physical withdrawal symptoms like coming off heroin or the deadly one, alcohol, because that is truly a threat to one's survival. But if you have had been treated for this, or it's an addiction without any physical withdrawal symptoms, then it's all psychological. It's all in the head. And emotionally, you can imagine that survival brain makes people feel panicky, feel like a little obsessive and afraid of getting things wrong. When you stop linking this to your survival, you will not get stressed so easily. And they don't feel calm and open to learning new things. They just want to get things over with. And if this is only psychological, then it is all dependent on what you believe. Now, due to this living in a constant survival mode, you can also begin to live in a destructive mode. Here, we use all our thinking to destruct ourselves, rather than to create a better life for ourselves. As survival brain stays on longer and longer, it's harder to get out of that. Now here, spirituality can help you. Meditation, living in the here and now, living selfless, and giving up everything you have mentally, like a monk, can help. As I is enough. Actually, there's not. We see a number of terms associated with impulsivity, like lack of forethought, risk-taking, inattention, lack of control, failing to plan, excitement-seeking, novelty-seeking, and quick decision-making. And this has to do with not considering potential consequences of behavior prior to acting. Really confident and euphoric, and they feel like they can't lose. So they go to a casino and they gamble away thousands of dollars. We all battle with impulsiveness to some degree. That is, we say things, we do things without really thinking about the results or the consequences. But it, comes, it becomes a major problem when it becomes a lifestyle. And people go through life essentially, shall we say, leaping before they look. They do not consider consequences. And as a result, things like personal health becomes at risk, relationships are at risk, employment, job settings, all these things become involved. Impulsive control disorder. Now the impulsiveness is just on another level when it comes to an addict. We begin to develop this condition over time and begin to lose control of our emotions and behaviours. You wouldn't be able to think correctly in what is right from wrong. So any acts of anger, violence, risky sexual behaviours, stealing, lying, one would even isolate oneself from friends and family which will even suggest poor social skills. In terms of our emotions, we wouldn't be able to manage stress, anger or anxiety and will not be able to manage your mood with feelings of sadness, 
feeling frustrated, disappointed, impatient, and feeling grumpy. This is when somebody has a preference for stimulation and excitement. It's also associated with increasing the likelihood of engaging in risky behavior, and it's specifically related to substance use, and they regret it, they acknowledge that they were impulsive, but then soon after, they do the same thing again. So it's really the nature of impulsivity. It's actually quite hard to resist for some people. So if you don't have controls over your own emotions and behaviors, then who does? You know, I'm excited for you, and I know this is confusing and, and probably a little difficult to comprehend, um, the good thing for you is uh, everything's kind of taken care of. You don't really have to do anything but put one foot in front of the other. You need to give that power to a captain of your ship. Someone you can trust. And you can know more about this on one of my posts on Instagram. I uploaded with the quote, When you are afraid of who you are, who you have become, best to leave it in someone else's hands. Now, in the caption of this quote, I explain the importance of a captain of your ship, who it can be, their role in it, and also your role. So do check it out, and just click on the link in my YouTube banner on my homepage, mm. which will direct you to my Instagram page. Yes, now it's easier said than done. The, the big uh, solution, I think, is improved self-control. If we have good self-control, impulsiveness usually is no major problem. That's the big solution. The more immediate goal is simply to think consequences. Think about the results of my words or actions before I say them or do them. It's like, like chess. We have to strategize and think ahead. If I move here, this will happen, that will happen. So is that it? Don't link anything to our survival, which was point number one, and control our impulsiveness, which is point number two. No, there is one final thing. The most important thing, our decision making. danger that I would put them in. People often say that they find it hard to make decisions. They become indecisive individuals over time and some people put off making decisions for a long period of time. Now decision making involves problem solving. Choosing between multiple solutions to a problem becomes impossible for one. So when you are finding a solution in terms of your addiction, you would find it hard to decide on which solution to choose. What really matters? What do you do first and what do you do last? Our reality becomes warped, no matter how hard we try. Viewing addiction as a brain disease is understandable, as addiction does make many changes in the brain. But only believing this, you will be more likely to relapse. As this doesn't mean that the addiction cannot be replaced with a healthier habit. This doesn't also mean that we cannot undo the hijacking of the brain by preventing and delaying our addiction use. Instant gratification. We can channel the same addictive brain to healthier activities in life, which can undo the hijacking. As our brain is supposed to change, we can change this brain intentionally. Now to learn or change anything we need practice. So delaying our addiction use will demand the brain to change. And playing any decision making games will also demand the brain to change. Choosing healthy activities will demand the brain to change. Every decision has a consequence and every consequence has another consequence. And what might seem like a positive thing in the short term might be a negative thing in the long term. When you make a decision, you don't just have to think about instant effects of that decision, but you also have to think about consequences. And, you know, couldn't wait to, to get out of there to go use more. Sound
up really very uh, briefly by saying that addiction is not a choice that anybody makes, it's not a moral failure, it's not an ethical lapse, it's not a weakness of character, it's not a failure of will, it's just how society depicts addiction, nor is it an inherited brain disease, which is how the medical tendency is to see it. What it actually is, it's a response to human suffering. And all these people that I worked with had been severely traumatized as children. All the women had been sexually abused. All the men had been uh, traumatized, some of them sexually, physically, emotionally neglected. And not only is as such or a human choice, it actually is it's an attempt to escape suffering temporarily. By the time to heal from their trauma, it is all about trauma. Symptoms of PTSD include sleep disturbance, nightmares, flashback, anxiety and depression, excessive fears, impulsivity, and addictive behaviors. People with unresolved trauma often turn to alcohol and other drugs as a means to self-medicate. This may alleviate their stress temporarily, but it is never a long-term solution. Reactions can develop into full-blown psychological disorders, including post-traumatic stress disorder, and in an effort to cope, sometimes addiction. When but any of these disorders is left untreated, sufferers may start to feel desperate to find some way to cope, and one way may be substance abuse. Unfortunately, addiction and trauma can go hand in hand, and it can be hard to recover from one without also dealing with the other. According now, the reason of a relapse might just be emotional pain and past or current trauma, which can also make many changes in the brain and a continual addiction response. What we have done or what has happened, we can't undo. The past is the past. But we can see things differently and understand thyself. As even though this has happened outside of us, which has triggered something within us. It is still, and always will, remain within us. So discover the most important person in your life, which is you. Before you click off this video, I just wanna thank you for watching it to the end of the video. A good ending to my story is that I eventually found what I was looking for, which was sobriety and a better life. I learned on how not to link anything to my survival. I learned how to handle my past emotions and I developed skills in decision making. It's like I could see more of my future steps than before. It was something I never looked into even though I felt I tried everything in my life. So this video is one of them only if I knew this before kind of video. If you feel the world of addiction is crazy and you yourself are within an active addiction or you know someone like a family member or a friend or it's something that interests you then please do share this video you also need to check out my other video on why you are an addict i cover more on understanding addiction in the life of an addict who needs to handle their emotional pain and trauma it will be shown on the screen if you want to see more, then hit that subscribe button and I'll have your feed with more suitable content. I look forward to seeing you all in the future projects to come. There are a lot of exciting ideas I've got in mind and I wish you all the best and that's only because you are the best. Thanks again.